Okay, so walk it through it with me. You are a crime scene investigator. You have walked upon a pretty gory scene. There is a dead body and there is blood on the wall. You need to know if what you're seeing is blood splatter because it was a violent crime or was actually just the leftovers of a fly meal. Hello, my beautiful, lovely, and intellectually curious love bugs. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello, my name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study bugs, and I live in Ecuador, where normally I'm doing ecotourism focused on insects, ecology, conservation, and local culture, but obviously that isn't happening right now. So hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. We talk about bugs almost every single week. Sometimes I talk about Ecuador, but bugs still make a cameo. So if you like bugs, insects, entomology, or ecology, just like learning about the natural world, then feel free to subscribe and ding that bell icon so that way you get notified every single time I post, which is like once a week. Sometimes it's Wednesday, sometimes it's Thursday. When I'm really bad at life, sometimes it's Friday. But anyway, you get the point, it's about once a week. So without any more intro, let's get into our video topic today. Eight, eight terrestrial arthropods that can spit, barf, puke, both, some of the above, all of the above. So let's get into it. This list is in no particular order. It's literally the, the how I wrote it in my notebook. Today's entomology word of the day is extra oral digestion. And if you're interested in knowing what that is, keep watching this video. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's start going to like what spit is and like barf and all of these lovely topics because I'm an adult and obviously not immature whatsoever. Spit, we are going to be loosely, very loosely defining in this video to either have something to do with the salivary glands or something to do with generally how the insect would be eating and if it is coming out of the general mouth bits. Very scientific. <laughs> and for barf, we are going to be defining it as something that is either coming out of the midgut, which is very similar to our stomach, or a small section of the digestive system right before the midgut called sometimes the crop. So basically, we're kind of dealing with the eating bits of insect morphology and anatomy and behavior and stuff. Like very loosely defined today. More for funsies, less for very being technical for the sake of being technical. You know what I mean? Number one on our list are like grasshoppers, katydids, crickets. We're just gonna lump them all together because they're all in the same order. But they can barf up this viscous, brown, liquidy material that smells really bad, apparently in some cases like sulfuric acid, and will also hurt if they bite you and it gets into that wound. So if you're gonna pick up a grasshopper or a katydid or something, like pick it up from the back. This brown, viscous, smelly liquid is telling predators, hey, back off, I smell bad, I taste bad, you know, just like leave me alone, bra. These orthopterans, mainly grasshoppers, will be eating toxic plant materials that are either high in alkaloids or sometimes high in glycosides. But regardless, this defense mechanism of barfing up some of these half digested plant bits is also telling predators, hey, I can make you really sick. You might die. You might throw up. You just are just much better off just leaving me alone altogether. Number two on this list is the spitting spider. The spinning spider from Ischelicerae, which are things that inject venom into their prey. Unless, of course, you are the spitting spider and your Ischelicerae have been fused together and you spit at very high speeds in a zigzag pattern, this possibly venomous and liquidy congealing-like substance that hits the particular prey item and ensnares it into this liquid silk possibly venomous compound the spider then just kind of like waltzes up injects the venom and sucks it dry you know normal spider stuff number three on our list are assassin bugs i've talked about assassin bugs many a time on this channel usually to react videos so take a look at the card up there normally assassin bugs end up on these like 10 most dangerous arthropod lists one, because their name is particularly intimidating, assassin, although all they're doing is assassinating garden pests. So 
very scary. And two, because there are some types of assassin pugs in a very specific subfamily called triatomine that can transmit Chagas disease in many places that most primarily are not the United States. Anyway, that is a whole other thing. If you want to see all about that, it's up there. Okay. Assassin bugs are not unique in the fact that they have extra oral digestion. Many other true bugs and hemipterin card up there for the difference also have extra oral digestion. Extra oral digestion in this particular case with the assassin bugs means that the assassin bug wants to eat an insect, right? Very delicious. But the problem for the assassin bug is while other things like beetles have big mandibles to go chompy chomp, the assassin bugs have a straw-like mouth part that can really only do the slurpy slurp. As you can tell, we're very technical on this channel. <laughs> this straw-like mouth part is called the hemipterin beak and cannot bite in a typical, like, you know, crunchy crunch way. So the arthropod needs to be able to suck up anything that is in the insect to be able to eat it. And this is where their extra oral digestion comes into play. So the assassin bug stabs its insect prey with its beak and injects this digestive saliva. That saliva starts wreaking havoc because of all these digestive enzymes and starts literally liquefying the insect into a kind of soup. The assassin bug then slurps it all up through its straw-like mouth part and because most of the digestion has already been done that makes it a lot easier on its midgut or its stomach to finish off the rest of the digestive process number four is the velvet worm the velvet worm kind of like the spitting spider also has the ability to spit out a liquid jet of some sort that then congeals on its insect prey these come from a set of nozzles located right next to the mouth and go bloop, 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 and spit out these strings of kind of liquidy and goopy material. When it hits the arthropod prey, it congeals like a kind of glue. The more that the insect prey tries to wiggle and move out of the way, the stronger and stronger and stronger these bonds become and the more glue-like and hardened this liquid becomes. The blind velvet worm then feeling around with his antennae just kind of like waltzes over and slowly consumes the insect, glue and all, because recycling, am I right? Love bugs. Don't forget to tell me which one of these is the most shocking or surprising to you in the thought box below. Number five is the honeybee. The honeybee both brings back pollen and nectar for the hive, right? It's one of many. They need to feed many mouths. And some of those mouths are larval mouths that are babies that can't do anything. I spoiled, am I right? So the honeybees have pollen baskets to help them bring back pollen to the hive but they need to bring back nectar to make honey. And nectar is liquid, and honeybees have not yet invented cups. So here we are. So the honeybees will drink up the nectar and it is stored in a part of the digestive system called the crop, which is right before their mid gut. And some insects use it to store bacteria that helps them digest things. And some don't really use it at all. And honeybees use it to store nectar. So the honeybee has drunk from many different flowers. The honeybee then returns to the hive and lovingly barfs it up into a food cell where that liquidy nectar is then dried out and fanned to make honey, which is also delicious. We like to eat it. We put it on lots of food. Anyway, bee vomit. Amazing. Also, why technically honey isn't vegan, if you are vegan. Number six is the green lynx spider. The, the green lynx spider is really interesting because it can actually spit and spray its venom out of its fangs. It really hasn't been studied at all except for the fact that it is a green lynx spider and that it can spray its venom. We're not exactly sure what the venom is made of. We're not exactly sure how effective it is at like doing anything to anything else, who it's meant to deter, how it's deterring them, if it's deterring them, if it just looks kind of freaking scary, who knows, but they can do it. Number seven are caterpillars. Caterpillars have their spinnerets right next to their mouth and those are connected to a pair of modified salivary glands and that's how they make silk. So yeah, that nice silk wedding dress that you had is actually caterpillar spit. I, uh, I hope I didn't ruin anything for you. 
Sometimes caterpillars will use their silk in the larval form to protect each other. So you'll find a lot of eastern tent caterpillars all crammed in together in one big tent because they're protected. Silkworm mouth caterpillars are producing their silk to protect the really delicate pupal stage, which they need to sit in for quite some time, usually throughout the winter before they can emerge as they moth. And finally, number eight on our list are houseflies. Please note that I say housefly here, but that many different families of flies can do this, such as the calliphorids and the blowflies, or the flesh flies, which are the sarcophagids, but not all flies do this, so the vocabulary is a little bit annoying and complicated, which is why I just use quote unquote housefly as a substitute. That make effectively a puke bubble. Houseflies also have extra oral digestion, but instead of a piercing straw-like mouth part, they have basically a sponge. So it's very difficult for them to go chompy chomp or stabby stab. They more go like lappy lap. Why am I talking like this? What is wrong with me today? <laughs> I'm a professional. So when a housefly is lapping up grease from your pizza, blood from a dead guy, or poo fluids from dog poo. They're not the most beautiful creatures on the planet, but they certainly have their place. But when they're doing all of these different activities, the food that they're eating is usually very high in complex sugars or very high in complex proteins that then need to be broken down, which is not very easy for their digestive system. So what they'll do is they'll like kind of slurp it up and then like kind of barf it back up into this regurgitative bubble. And there a lot of their digestive enzymes are getting to work on those complicated molecules. And then they'll just slurp it back up again. If it was good once, it's probably good the second time around, right? Understanding fly vomit can be really important in the field of forensic entomology. Forensic entomology is the use of insect evidence in a court or law setting. Sometimes this is CSI and like Bones-esque where there's a crime scene, there's a dead guy, the flies are there first, you need to study them to figure out how long this dead body has been there. Sometimes it's rather mundane, like I found a caterpillar in my hamburger, whose fault is that? We're going to be talking about the former because it's really important if you are coming to a crime scene, especially if the crime scene was particularly violent and there is blood splatter, that you can tell the difference between actual blood splatter and these fly recurgitative bubble stains, because that happens. Okay, so walk it through it with me. You are a crime scene investigator. You have walked upon a pretty gory scene. There is a dead body and there is blood on the wall. You need to know if what you're seeing is blood splatter because it was a violent crime or was actually just the leftovers of a fly meal because the flies will go over to the body, eat whatever happens to be liquid and laying around. Sometimes this can include blood, go over to the wall, puke it up, do their bubble, and then re-drink it up again. And this can leave stains on the wall in a spotted pattern that can look like blood splatter. One of the ways that you can tell that it was fly vomit and not blood splatter is that fly vomit does not have a directionality as the fly will just come over, like puke up their bubble, and then drink it back up again. You'll see all these random dots all over the place versus blood splatter that would have a directionality from where the person or thing was hit. Well, that concludes our list. I hope that you really liked it. Don't forget to tell me which one was the most shocking or surprising to you. And also, if you know of any others that I missed, feel free to also leave them in the thought box below. If you like these lists, let me know and I can definitely do more of them. If you want kind of more Entomologist Explains videos, you can click right up here. And if you are interested in seeing me just be like, oh my God, why to a bunch of, you know, 10 most dangerous arthropods on the planet, whatever videos, you can find all those down there in the React playlist down here. Well, love bugs, that's all for me and I will see you all next week. Bye.